find these words recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 22 and 23. But I must die in this land. I must not go over the Jordan. But ye shall go over and possess the good land. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he hath made with you, and make you a a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. I want to talk this afternoon from the thought seasons of transition. That's what I want to talk about seasons of transitions. It is a proven fact that Change is one of the most feared things that human beings can encounter. We resist change with every fiber of our being. We love stability. We love for things to remain as they are. We don't like our routine to be interrupted or disrupted. It is important to understand that one of the aspects of life is that life always changes. One person said the only thing that is constant is change. Yet it is impossible to get from where we are to where we are going without making transition. I feel that the greater part of our success as Christians and as a church is how we manage transitions. We need to learn how to function and ultimately be successful in the season of transitions. And here it is. Here's the reality of the fact is transitions aren't always easy. In fact, most of the time they are painful. But transition is also necessary. Look at what Paul says about transitions in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. I want to read it out of the NIV versions. NIV version, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It may be on the screen. And we all with who unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which come from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And then Paul says over in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 through 14, Paul understands transition was a necessary part of life when he says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Transitions are hard. They force us from the familiar into the unknown. And often they sometimes make us go kicking and screaming in order to embrace the transition. First of all, in order to embrace the trans transition, we need to understand the nature of transition. A transition is not a change just for the sake of changing. A transition is moving from one point to another. It is essentially moving forward. When we as Christians begin to encounter transitions, when things begin to get shaky and unfamiliar, we need to realize that God is taking us somewhere. 
He is repositioning us. There are things that you cannot get where you are at. So what God does is he strategically positions you so that you'll be able to access things that you can never get in the place of where you are. Mark Bettison states it like this. It says, God is in the business of strategically positioning us in the right place at the right time. A sense of destiny is our birthright as followers of Christ. God is awful, uh, awfully good at getting us to where he wants us to go. But here's the catch. The right place often seems like the wrong place. And the right time often seems like the wrong time. Let me say it again because y'all missed that right there. The right place often seems like the wrong place. And the right time often seems like the wrong time. Remember in Luke chapter 8, the Bible uh, relates a story about transition. Luke chapter 8 verses 22 to 25, the Bible talks about now it came to pass on a certain day that that he went into the ship with his disciples and he said to them, let us go to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. And so here we find Jesus with his ministry team, his apostles. And he says there is somewhere that they need to go. And if we read further into the story, we will see that on the other side of the lake was a man in desperate need of deliverance. And Jesus needed to position his team so they could minister to the need and impact a city. I need y'all to catch this here. And he knew that they could not reach the need where they were. In other words, he knew that uh, their present position was ineffective for the need. He realized that in order for them to be in a place of effectiveness, they would have to cross a sea to weather a storm. And then in verse 23, the Bible says, But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water, and they were in jeopardy. Here it is, that they were in jeopardy. In other words, there was a real challenge they were facing. These were not just perceived difficulties. They were in fragments of their imagination. This was a real physical obstacle to their mission. Here it is. Can I help somebody this afternoon? Many times following God's will does not take us down a road that is easy. It will not provide us with a path of least resistance. And many times we find ourselves in the midst of a storm and feeling as though we are in jeopardy. Here it is. Here it is. You, 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 this is a season uh, where, where, where uh, the folks on the outside, they're looking for folks on the inside to be real about the situation. You ain't coming here every Sunday and you got to shout and you got to pray. Everything ain't going right in your life all the time. All of us in here got some challenges. Here it is. Losing a job is a real challenge. It's not a fragment of our imagination. Moving to a new city, getting to know new people. It's just not a perceived trauma. It's real. Dealing with transitions in our homes and families is difficult. And these are things that are in real jeopardy. But when we face these things, we need to remember that if God brought you to it, that he is able to see you through it. And we need to remember that the storm is not the destination, but the pathway to the destination. In other words, God has not forgotten us in the storm. And we are still going somewhere. Somebody ought to declare that's good news right there. That in the midst of every storm that I am that in, that God has not forgotten about me. And God has not stagnated on his promises. And then we find in the 24th verse, he says, And they came to him and awoke him and saying, Master, Master, we perish." And then he arose and he rebuked the wind and the raging of the waters, and they ceased, and they were calm. And here it is, when we are led by God in situations that we cannot handle, 
we can be sure that he's going to show up and show out. If God presents us with a challenge bigger than we are, you can be sure that he has prepared to invest in us the resources that is necessary for us to meet the challenge. But I said some time ago, the Lord won't put more on us than we can bear. Uh, the reason he puts it on you is because he know you can withstand it. Somebody ought to look at your neighbor and say, I'm stronger than what you think I am. Matter of fact, some of us got that testimony that you've been through some turbulent times in your life. And you, you came out blowing your own mind because you didn't know you was as strong as you really thought you were. I wish I had a witness in it. Somebody been through sickness and somebody had disease hit their bodies and the doctors then gave up on you. And you came out walking around with your head up and your chest stuck out because you realized you were stronger than what you're going through. Is there anybody in the building that had that testimony that I declare that I am stronger than what I'm going through? And the reason I'm stronger than what I'm going through is because I declare that if God before me is more than the world. More than the world against me. And so he invests in us the resources necessary to meet the challenge. The, the trial did not come to master you, but it came to mature you. Uh, somebody, somebody had the testimony, I'm maturer. I'm, I'm much wiser. I'm much better. I'm much stronger. Matter of fact, I done got to a place I don't let any, er, anything and everything get me down. Some stuff that's on my shoulder, I learned how to just brush it off and keep on moving because I understand that my trials come not to master me, but it came to mature me. Then verse 25, he said in that same, that same verse, chapter, and he said unto them, where is, where is your faith? And they being afraid, wander, saying one to another, what manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the waters, and they obeyed him. See, here it is. You see, where we many times miss in the transition, that we need to know that God is in control of the transition. Here it is. We know where we need to go. And we know what will happen when we arrive. But somehow we lose sight of all of this while making the transition. We forget who we are, who is on board, and what he says. Here it is. We forget what God has said about us. And in the midst of transition, we lose our identity. Here it is. We must not forget in the darkness what God has promised us in the light. He never said this, there would be no storms. He never said there would be no challenges. He never said that it wouldn't be scary sometimes. But he did say we will make it out of the storm. Matter of fact, our, our, our destiny is greater than our storms. And here we find in our text, we see Moses that is charging the church in the wilderness. He is telling them that in order for them to inherit their promise, they would have to cross over. Now please understand this find they are at a point in the text where they were towards the end of their journey. Catch this. They have up to this point wandered for 40 years in the wilderness because they could not see themselves as conquerors of Canaan. They lost their identity in the wilderness. They forgot what God has spoken to them. They forgot the mighty hand of God that brought them to where they were. They, they, they were not lost in the wilderness. They, they knew where they were, yet 
before they could enter into the promise, they had to re realize who they were. So some of us are going through wilderness with clear direction. Because, because scripture gives us clear instructions of how to get out of our wilderness. It, it's not the problem that we have lost our way. It, the, the problem is we have, we have lost our identity of who we are while we're in the wilderness. And here it is a lot of times we forget where God has already brought us from. And so we get into the wilderness and, and we forget that we're more than conquerors. We get in the wilderness and we forget that we're the head and not the tail. We get into the wilderness and, and we forget that where our strength comes from. And God says you can never get into your wilderness and forget who you are. He said because before you even walked in your wilderness, I already anointed you and I already ordained you for such a time as this. So can I help about 20 people in the building? When you get in the midst of the wilderness, you ought to learn how to open your mouth, give God a praise. You ought to learn how to celebrate and tell the devil, no matter who you say I am, I know who I am, even in the midst of my wilderness. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, don't lose your identity. Don't lose who you are. You're you a peculiar person. You're a royal priesthood. You're connected to the DNA of the Holy Spirit. So don't you dare lose your identity of who you are. If you're a praiser, keep on praising in the wilderness. If you're a worshiper, keep on worshiping in the wilderness. If you got a hallelujah, keep your hallelujah in the wilderness. Don't lose who you are when you get in your wilderness. To go. What the? My brother, my brother, my sister, you better jump on board. Where I am now is way too small. 